everybody. My name is Howie Heckman with PTS. Today I'm going to show you guys how to set up a Bluetooth beacon scanner with Tracer Plus. So you can start, start scanning for Bluetooth beacons within your Tracer Plus project. Um, so just to start, I have an uh, Android device that I have sharing on my screen here. Right now it's just in a default state where I have session one with this field uh, one through ten. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and configure this so that it starts collecting beacon data when we cl uh, click a scan button. So I'll just move that uh, to the side for a couple minutes. Um, so here I have Tracer Plus Desktop. Um, this is the free-to-use design tool available at tracerplus.com. So if you'd like to set up anything I show you here today, just go to tracerplus.com and download the application. Uh, run through a quick installer and you'll be good to go. Um, so from this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use it to create my Bluetooth scanner. Um, and in the demo today, I was going to set up a scanner for iBeacon. However, the setup is very similar for Eddystone uh, type beacons. I'll kind of describe that a little bit to, uh, when I get to it. Um, but you should be able to set that up just as easily as the iBeacon scanner. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, select new project here. Uh, I'm going to name my project. It's called uh, iBeacon scanner. Uh, on my form, which is what the user will see. So actually you saw that the default one here was session one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, change this to be maybe be something like scanner, a BLE scanner, uh, and deploy this to the handheld. So now the first thing I need to do is start adding the fields of data that I'd like to collect every time a beacon is scanned. Now each beacon um, has different values that it'll collect. For iBeacon, uh, this includes things like a UUID, which could be a group of beacons uh, within your environment, uh, and then a major and minor number that you can use to specify a particular item within that, those groups. Um, so it would be assigned to a particular item for that beacon. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding those fields here. Uh, to the form. The first thing I'm going to add is the MAC address. Uh, this comes from each beacon. I'll go ahead and capture it in the first field. Uh, the next one will be the data or payload value, and this will actually just be the raw data that's coming from the beacon itself. Um, it's the data that Tracer Plus actually automatically parses behind the scenes that includes things like the UID value, the major, minor, and so on. So that's just the data. I'm just going to put it on the form here so we can see it. Uh, the third field will be that uh, iBeacon UUID value, then we'll do a major number, a minor number. Um, I also want to go ahead and capture two other fields of information. One is the RSSI or signal strength, and also a distance calculation. So the cool thing with beacons are they're um, designed with a value that specifies how uh, strong of a signal you, you can expect at one meter. And then if you can compare that to the RSSI value that you actually receive when you get that beacon, you can calculate a rough distance to it. And Tracer Plus does this automatically for you behind the scenes where it takes those two values, calculates the distance in meters to the beacon, and in an open space, you can get a relative idea of how far you are away from the beacon. Now, again, it's a very rough value. Uh, you really should use it for getting, uh, determining whether or not you're closer to a beacon or further away or something like that. Uh, but it is a good value to add to your form. Um, so here I have my uh, values that I'm collecting, MAC address data, UUID, major number, minor number, and so on. Um, but now I need to actually tell the application uh, that I want to put beacon data into these fields. Because right now they're just text fields that I've added to my Tracer Plus project. So to do that, I'm going to jump over to the data capture uh, menu option here. And I'm going to use this smart form grid. And each one of these configurations is going to be almost the same. Uh, I'll go ahead and add the first one. It's uh, Bluetooth beacon received right here. And what we want to do is just marry up the, the field of data that's coming from the beacon to the field in our Tracer Plus project where we'd like that data to go. Um, so in my case here, it's upon receiving a Bluetooth beacon, parse out the MAC address and put it into my MAC address field, which is the MAC address field that I have in the field settings here uh, on my, uh, in my session or on my form. And I'll just turn off this trigger after scan value. Now I'm going to do this for each one of my values. So I'm going to go ahead and add um, seven uh, entries into this list, and they're all going to be very similar. They'll just be set up uh, for each value that's coming over from that beacon every time it's received. So I'll go ahead and hit uh, Bluetooth beacon received, BLE beacon received for each one of these. Uh, I'm going to turn off the after scan for each one of these. I don't want that turned on for in this case here. And I'll go ahead and just marry these up. I'm going to set data to data iBeacon UUID, I'm going to, I want to push that value into my UUID field, same for major and minor number. And you can see in this list, there's also other values for the Eddystone. So if you're using Eddystone, 
you can go ahead and select those. So Tracer Plus, again, just like iBeacons, will automatically parse those values out and put them into the field that you'd like on your Tracer Plus form. And you can actually mix and match these as well. You can have Tracer Plus scan for both iBeacons and Eddystone beacons at the same time. Uh, but for just this demo here, I'm going to do uh, just iBeacons. So go ahead and uh, I have a UUID, major, minor number. Uh, I want to put minor into the minor value, uh, the RSSI into my RSSI field, and finally my distance calculation into the distance field. So here I have uh, Tracer Plus configured so that every time it receives a beacon, it's going to put the value for uh, that it parses out from that payload or that data that's coming from the beacon into the appropriate fields on my form. Okay, so now I have that set that step set up. I have my fields. And now I have, when a, a Tracer Plus is capturing data, it puts it into those fields. The last thing I need to do is actually start designing my form for capturing this data. So to do that, I'm gonna jump over to the form designer. Now I'll keep this kind of simple uh, for the demo, but I'll show you how to start capturing these beacons. I'm gonna hit create default. It builds a form based on the settings that I've created already. And I'll just kind of design this just a little bit here. Um, so it's not too simple, but I'll just um, line some of these fields up. Go ahead and line up their lefts and their widths, make everything the same. Okay, now just to describe some of this stuff here, uh, this is the form that's generated based on the field settings. If I were to start scanning for beacons at this moment, the beacons that come into Tracer Plus are gonna be put, placed into the appropriate fields on our form. Now, because you probably have a lot of beacons in your environment, every beacon that gets captured is going to be placed in these fields and then overwrite the next beacon. It's going to keep just accumulating the beacon, and put, but putting it into the field overwriting the previous one. So within Tracer Plus, we need a way of storing all of the beacons that we scanned and rep, uh, presenting them to the screen so you can see that data. And to do that, we'll put a grid control on our form that's actually going to be populated with all of the beacons that are then placed within uh, this uh, BLE scanner form. So what I'm going to do then is go ahead and add a grid control kind of just size it here down to be at the bottom of the form. And uh, just to help me out, I'm gonna turn this ID function on. This ID function up on this form just shows the control ID for every control on the form. You can see these blue numbers pop up and we're gonna use those in a minute uh, for our configuration so that we can link up these fields on the top to our grid control on the bottom. Um, now my grid control runs in two modes. Um, one is a live mode, we're actually viewing data on the handheld. Uh, if you had a parts list or asset list or something like that, you can view data but I wanna use it to actually capture all of the beacons that are being uh, populated in these uh, controls up on the top, these text, text fields. So I'm gonna switch my grid control uh, into a cached mode. And one thing I'll do is turn beep when row added to true. So every time a beacon is entered into this grid, it will beep. And so I know when I'm uh, using the Android device that it's picking up additional beacons. So now I'm gonna jump in and actually configure this, this grid control. So I'll come over here to the data options of my grid control, and I'll click on this little ellipsis here to bring up that um, configuration. Um, and here's where I can add columns to my grid. Now I'm gonna add seven columns, one for each field that I have from my beacons. Um, so I'll go ahead and add those here. And a lot of this configuration, again, will be relatively the same. Uh, first, I'll name the columns, uh, MAC address, uh, data, and so on. I'm just adding a column for each one of the values that I had added to my form. I have my major and minor numbers, the RSSI and the distance calculation. So again, these columns are going to be populated with the data that um, is being captured on the form. <clears throat> so here I have my, uh, grid, uh, my columns and I'll just hit done here so you can see this. Each one of the columns have been entered. Now the next thing I need to do is I really need to link up these fields up above to these columns down below. And I'm gonna do that by this control ID and what's called a control or a binding from control to grid. So I'll open my uh, um, grid control options dialog again using that ellipsis. First thing I'm gonna do is change the binding direction to from control because I only want the data coming from these fields up above and going into the grid. If you had the other way, if you clicked on an item within the grid, it'll populate these controls here. But I really just wanna use this to collect data into my grid. So I'm gonna switch all of these to be from control. Go ahead and from control. 
And then I'm going to come back in and link them up to the appropriate fields on our form. So here's from control, from control, and finally for distance, the from control. And now I need to go ahead and bind them. So that is this bound control property, which by default is set to minus one, but I'm going to set it to be the control on the form. So MAC address is going to be five, because it's the five up here. Uh, data seven, and so on. I'm going to do this for each one of these controls here. Um, so that they're populated with the appropriate values from the form. So I have 13, minus a five, 15. Finally, the distance there is 17. So again, I'm linking up by this control ID to the a correct column down below. A um, couple other things I do want to set for this grid control. I am going to make the MAC address a key column because I want the MAC address to only appear once in this grid control. If I didn't do that, if I got a beacon twice, the same beacon twice, it'll make two entries in the grid control. So I'm going to set that MAC address to be a key column so that if I continually receive that beacon data on the same beacon, it'll update the same row with the new information. So you'll actually see the distance and the RSSI values changing as you move within relation to that beacon. And you can see those values changing within the grid control. So I'll set that one to be a key column. I'm going to set tr uh, triggers binding true for this one. And for the other ones, I'm going to turn off the trigger binding. I only want to do this once for efficiency. If I receive a beacon, I only want to trigger that bind into the grid control once. So I'll just turn those off for these other values. I think that's all I need. So I have MAC address as my key column, because it's unique to that beacon. And then the other ones are basically just linked to the appropriate fields on the form. And at this point, I think I should be good. Okay, so I have these fields linked up with these columns. Um, so if you filled out data on these fields, they'll populate down below in these columns as new rows based on the MAC address. Now, the last thing I need to do in the case of BLE uh, beacon scanning is actually put, give the user a way to start the scanner and stop the scanner. So I do that by adding a um, button to my form. So I'll go ahead and put that down here in this little space I have. Um, I'll put on the caption, scan, the button action, will be BLE uh, device. And let me just line this up with the tops of these controls. Okay, so that's nicely lined up with those. Now for the scanner, I want to configure a couple things on this. So I'm going to go into this BLE options property in the control properties on the right-hand side and hit the ellipsis, so just like the grid control. And it brings up the configuration for this uh, Bluetooth low energy button. Um, the one thing I wanted to, the service I wanted to scan for is a beacon. Uh, and now it will, if I press this, uh, start scanning for beacons within Tracer Plus. Now, one thing that's pretty important for a setup with these Bluetooth beacons are adding filters to what you're scanning for, because there could be a lot of beacons in your environment that maybe you don't intend to scan for, um, and you'll want to add the uh, filters to this list here. So I'm just going to go ahead and add one, and in my case, it'll be a very simple uh, filter. I'm just going to select a type of iBeacon. So by me only filling out this one column in this filter list here, when I press the scan button, it will actually only scan for iBeacons. Now, if I were to add additional values here, maybe a UUID uh, or a major or minor, that's telling the hardware, the Android device, to only scan uh, and receive iBeacons that maybe match the UUID that I entered or maybe match the major number that I entered. So if you only want to scan for a subset of beacons within your environment, you would go ahead and select a major number here. Uh, that you could scan for. Uh, also, you'll notice in this list, I could have selected Eddystone. If I select Eddystone, there are some additional properties to the right-hand side that you can filter on. Um, one is the frame type. We support UID, URL, and TLM. These are different types of data that the Eddystone beacons will ping out. The UID is similar to iBeacons. It has a, a namespace and instance as opposed to UUID major and minor number. Um, and the a uh, URL actually ping out like a, um, a URL. So you can actually set up an Eddystone beacon to ping out a web address, and then that can be captured or filtered within uh, Tracer Plus. Uh, to the TLM or telemetry, this is for battery power and things like that. But for today, I'm just going to go ahead and set my single filter to be iBeacon. So if I press this button, it's just looking for any iBeacon in the area, and we'll populate them now into this grid control. OK, so I think I have everything I want set there. To deploy this application, uh, all you need to do within Tracer Plus desktop is go down to, well, first I'll save my project um, over at the existing. I'm going to hit build deploy, 
And this brings up my deployment process. Uh, I'm going to switch the platform, in this case, to be Android, although iOS is basically the same. Uh, I'll select Use the Deploy Server and hit Deploy. And this will generate a QR code that you can scan on your handheld. So if I bring the screen share back over for my mobile device, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the menu option up here on the top left and hit Download Project. Uh, this download project now allows me to scan that QR code. So let me move it out of the way. And I'm actually using the barcode scanner that's um, integrated on this device. And I'll pull the trigger. It scans that uh, barcode. And you can see it just downloaded my project. So that one form that I have here, the BLE scanner, is now accessible from the home screen on my device. And if I were to open this application up, you can see now it looks just like what we have designed in Tracer Plus Desktop. So again, that's how easy it is to get a form that you've created over to the device. Um, but you can see it's all set up just as we had within uh, the Tracer Plus Desktop Designer. And down below, you can see the scan button actually has a little Bluetooth logo configured here. Now I'm going to go ahead and press the scan button. And you can see it starts scanning for beacons. And um, you can see the beacon data populating up on the top right here. So this data is now being captured in the grid control. However, it's not currently populated in my grid. So I do actually have to link that up or trigger that. Uh, value to link up to this grid control. So I'm going to stop my scan here uh, and go back over to Tracer Plus Desktop. Uh, and the one thing I'm going to do to tri trip this scan is add a form logic item that says on field value changed of five, which is our MAC address, um, trigger after scan in five. This will force that entry into the MAC address, which is changing as the scanner is going to trip this, the bind into my grid control. And to deploy that again, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my deployment dialog, select Android, hit deploy. I'm going to go back over to the handheld. And again, I'm going to do that same thing where I hit download project. And um, I'm just going to scan barcode again, so I didn't click that. But it refreshes my project. I'll open this up again, hide the keyboard, and hit scan. And now you can see the uh, beacons that are being popped the distance values are changing here as those beacons are being received uh, based on the signal strength that's coming from them. So you can see they'll be updated in this grid control. But as I'm receiving beacons, they're populated in this. And I'll go ahead and stop the scan. But now you can see each one of these values, I have my data, the payload, the MAC address of that beacon, the UUID that comes over, since these are all iBeacons that I'm scanning for, as well as major and minor numbers, which could be used to uniquely identify an item that comes into your grid control as well as that RSSI value and then the distance. So um, just a couple notes on these. This distance you can see was bouncing around. That is a generally a better distance in an open environment uh, where you don't necessarily have um, uh, walls or metal items within um, between you and the beacon. Uh, so you will see that bouncing around quite a bit, but it does give you in an open area a relatively uh, close approximation of distance uh, just so you know you're nearby one of those beacons. Um, but that's really all I kind of wanted to show you guys today for beacon scanning. I hope this is helpful in getting a beacon application set up within Tracer Plus. We talked about iBeacon today. However, the set setup is very, very similar for Eddystone if you'd like to do that as well. And you can mix and match the um, beacons that you'd like to uh, include within your project as well. You don't have to just select one or the other. Um, so with that, I hope this again is helpful for you guys. Um, check out our YouTube channel for any other tutorials on setting up Tracer Plus or any of its features. Um, we look forward to uh, getting your feedback on these videos as well. But I do appreciate everyone hopping on and taking a look at uh, beacon scanning within Tracer Plus. So thanks again, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.